Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to replicate this uh, map that represents China, Japan, and South Korea. This is a color plate map where the intensity of the color depends, in this case, on the number of the population of these three countries. Let's see how we can do this in ggplot2. So, first of all, we need to load these four packages. Let's run. We will use these three other packages in the in the next video. So, first of all, where do I take the data from? I take the data from this uh, website. Let's have a look. This is the the website. Uh, I suggest you to navigate to know more about this project. We can check here the countries available. So let's check one. And here we have the different files that we can uh, download. And this level, level 0, 1, 2, basically they correspond to the different level of maps that we can do at different administrative levels. We can have an idea from this map here. So let's go back to our studio. Let's see how we can do this. First of all, let's check all the countries available with this function get data. So let's have a look. We need this ISO3 code. This one that identify uh, this code, this code that identifies the countries. So let's check, for example, this is a China. For China, we need to use this code. Then what about Japan? So for Japan here, we need this this code here, and then for South Korea. South Korea, we need this one. So now that we know uh, the codes, let's download the data. So we use this function, get data. This is the name of the database, country, JPN for Japan. In this case, level equals zero for, uh, for the country. So let's run this code. So we have downloaded the data. If we go in the working directory, we see this, we downloaded this, uh, uh, this data set. And by the way, if you watch the video about setting up a project in, uh, in our studio, you should have my same working directory, r underscore map. Otherwise, you will find this in your working directory. Let's investigate now this object, let's check the glass. And you see this is a spatial polygon data frame. Let's view it. This is the kind of data, how it is stored. Let's check here. For example, let's check name zero. This one, so this uh, data set correspond to the country. Now let's have a look also to the other one for Japan, just to have an idea. So let's uh, download this level equal one. So this is for the prefecture. Let's run this code. And you can see now we have here the, the data set. Again, we can check the class. Let's view it. Now, if we open here, we see that we have name one. This respond. This correspond to uh, the prefecture in Japan. Let's finally let's check this one level level two for town and city in uh, in Japan. Plus view, you can see here. Now we have these are the name 
uh, the name the names of the cities these are these are the names here of the cities in this uh, this data set so now to have a better uh, understanding of this data let's plot very fast let me go here let me enlarge but now to plot very fast we just use the plot uh, plot function so let's run this As you can see, we have the country without uh, any domestic re administrative boundaries here. Let's run the second one. And as you can see now, we have the administrative prefecture. Finally. This one with all the town and cities in uh, in Japan. So now I want to plot uh, the country, uh, but I want to use uh, ggplot. So now what's the issue? The issue is as you can as, as you saw, we have a data set in a as a partial polygon data frame. Plot with ggplot, we need the data set to be a data frame. The first things that we need to do is just to convert the data set into a data frame. So for this, we are going to use this function tidy. So let's run this code. By the way, this can take a few seconds, so you can play the video forward. Okay, it's ready. Now we can say plus, and this is a T ball data frame. This is fine for us. Let's have a look. Now, as you can see, we went from a data set like this in, th in this format. This is the standard format for a data frame, and this is what we need. Now, uh, let's add a column pop for population this is the population of japan so we added this column here we will use later on now we are ready to plot so this is the standard code to plot using ggplot but what we really need is this one to plot a, a geographical map so data this is our uh, data frame E, uh, AES statics, we are mapping longitude to X, latitude to Y, group equal group is this one. And basically we have to group the, the data because we want to plot in a given order all the all these points. And here fill equal the this one will be uh, clear in the next in the next plot. This is the title for uh, equal to keep a fixed structure of the plot. Team underscore uh, void here to control for the background. Basically, we will set a blank uh, background and then I'm removing the, the legend. So let's run this code. And this is our map of Japan with ggplot. So now let's make the things a little bit more interesting. So we are going to add China and South Korea. So we have to run the same code as before. We have to import the data and then we have to make the data as a data frame. So let's do for China. Let's convert. And this can take a seconds.
Okay, it's ready. Let's add the population for China. Now let's do the same for South Korea. Now let's bind all these data frames together. Let's view. So we have in just one uh, data frame, we have all the data in Japan, in China, we have South Korea. So now let's plot all together. This is the same code as before. I'm just adding the legend here. So let's run. This is our map with China, Japan, and South Korea with the legend here. But now let's make this as a corporate map. What I'm adding here is fill equal pop. So we'll use the population the number of population and we need this one scale fill gradient i'm using sky blue as the low color slate blue for as the high color i'm setting the name population million this will be the the name of the legend the title of the legend here I'm setting again the legend. I'm just changing the direction to horizontal. So let's run this one. And this is our map, our plat map. And naturally, the population of China is huge, so this color is very intense. And then we have a slightly difference between uh, South Korea and Japan. They are in this, uh, this area here. So, uh, just to conclude this video, I want to show how to export this uh, data frame. The issue is that now we have collected all this data set in just one uh, data frame and uh, perhaps we want to use this for another project and we don't want to uh, download and bind together all these data frames again so let's export um, as a csv file use this function write dot uh, csv this is the name of the data frame that we want to export df this is the file name this will be located in our working directory. And this row.names equal false is because I don't want to export also this column name, uh, this column numbers here. Again, this can take a few seconds because this is a huge data frame, but let's run this code. Okay, ready. So let's have a look to a, pre a preview of this data set. This is the preview of our CSV file. So I hope this video is useful. Let me in the comment section if you use this code to replicate your country or other countries. And if you enjoyed this video, see you in the next one.